This episode of TRS is brought to you by Reebok ZigTech, the energy drink for your feet. Coming up today, Jeff gives us a behind the scenes look at training for the marathon. So on today's episode of TRS, we're gonna do something a little bit different. As you may know, uh, Reebok has sponsored our show and they have these awesome ZigTech shoes and they gave me a pair and one of the, my beliefs, and I think all of our beliefs, is that being a geek or being a nerd doesn't have to be synonymous with being out of shape. Correct. And I think a lot of people do think that that's true and I think we all consider ourselves nerds and we all consider ourselves People who well Dan no, well Dan I know, you're going going with this, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> well, man, I, I just I I, <laughs> I really would like think, to be more in shape. I think it can be a very fun, active thing to be active. Jeff, you actually enjoy running. It's fun for you to do. It's a fun thing to do. And I don't consider Explain. myself a runner, which is okay. That, that is odd. Yeah. I don't think I'm good at it. <clears throat> well, but what you, do you mean? If you do you're not fast, I'm not good. I don't think I have a natural inclination to be a runner. I don't. I don't run very fast. I don't run. Like I'm, I'm training for the marathon. You're gonna see some of my marathons. This is training. like your fourth marathon, right? It is my fourth marathon. I don't think that my physique or my body type or my uh, respiratory system is, you know, like. Um, You're not a natural born runner. Exactly. You know how uh, what's his name, the cyclist, uh, Lance, Lance Armstrong. Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. He uh, supposedly he like processes oxygen through his blood at a higher rate than human beings right. should. You don't right, feel right. that that's you. That ain't me. <laughs> right. For me, it's always been a mental. Exercise, Challenge. yeah, and and I love the process. Like you said, I actually have gotten to the point where I love it. I listen to um, uh, audio books or yeah. podcasts when I run. I listen to talking, yeah. and I don't listen to that any other time. So I associate and I think that, that too, entertainment with it. I think that that is really interesting because for me, I would always be like, well, everybody that I see on TV or that I know to be exercise people have like the thumping techno yeah. beat thing to be able to like get your motor running. It feels good to like set a goal and just achieve that goal. Yeah. yeah. Which is really how the marathon thing came about, which is sort of like, I never thought I could do it. Yeah. And doing something that you didn't think you could do is pretty freaking empowering. I ran my first marathon without knowing anything. Honestly, didn't know anything. We I just, were there actually. Dan and I yeah, were at the, 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 the end of high five, me sweaty up. Jeff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really, it was horrible. It was a <laughs> horrible experience. And I, Told myself I never want to do this again. This was. I remember stupid... hearing a lot of that. And then, like, and At then the ribs you, place. you forget the pain. <laughs> you forget it is honestly painful. But you forget that, and you go, you know what? I think I could do that again. And then a little while later, you go, yeah. I really know. I know I can do better. Hmm. And then it becomes this like thing where you yeah. keep wanting to do it. Have you gotten any cool questions from? Yeah, folks I, I at asked home? a few people to send in questions. Let's see. Uh, uh, DKI on Twitter asked, "Have I ever been injured during training? Lost toenails?" Deuced myself, uh, <laughs> bloody nipples. <laughs> I've never deuced. Yeah. Um, I've actually gotten to a point where I really had to go in the middle of a long run. Yeah. It's not not pleasant. Uh, you'll, you'll see in the training uh, that I take measures to provide to prevent bloody nipples because that is a true problem. It sounds really? ridiculous, but yes. Wow. That sounds horrible. Uh, okay. Um, did you have you lost toenails? Heather went through a, a she like got a yeah. couple of toenails that fell off, and they yeah. were like, yeah, those will come back. During the marathon, I lost a toenail a yeah. couple of times. <gasps> yeah, it's bad. It's an awful, when, it's, when it comes off, when you're running and you, it comes off and you feel it come off, it's bad. Ah! T2Kiz uh, asks, at what mile do you hit your brick wall if you do and how do you push through it? That's funny. That is one of the is most interesting Is there a specific thing. thing that you like, oh, here comes 12, that's my joint. No, but you do hit a, hit a, they call it a wall. running in construction sites. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Horrible. You do hit a wall. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you hear people talk about all oh, the, the wall that you hit. It's tr it, There's a point at which your whole body goes, nope, can't go on anymore. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing, the craziest thing, is that you can just keep going. Huh. Like you're in every part of you says stop. I would know. Yeah. <laughs> every part of you says don't go anymore. Your mind is like you have to stop right now. Yeah. And if you just keep going, that goes away. Weird. And you realize it is all mental. It is yeah. all mental. John Asquith asked me uh, what kickstarted the whole thing, hmm. and. I think you guys heard this story. A friend of mine did the marathon the year before I did, the first time. And Joe? I, Joe. Your friend Joe, yeah, I mm -hmm. think I did hear this. And he just decided to do it, didn't really tell anybody, and did it, and then talked to me afterwards. He's like, yeah, I did it. And I was like, 
screw that guy. If he can do it, I can do it. And he's <laughs> like, well, do it with me next year. I was like, okay. <clears throat> That's really the lesson that I'm trying to convey to people that I honestly don't think I'm good at running. I don't think there's anything special about me. Hmm. I, it, it is really just a decision. If you make the decision to want to do it, and you stick to that, and you hold yourself, I mean, the only the only quality that you need is a little bit of discipline to say, yeah. I'm gonna do this a little bit every day. You don't have to run a lot. As you'll see in the video, I don't run a ton. I mean, I'm like, the training is like a half an hour on Tuesday, 45 minutes on Wednesday. It's not a ton, and you do a little bit every day, and it's totally accomplishable. It is an mm. accomplishable goal. And would you recommend so, them working with some of the people like you're doing in LA? LA Roadrunners, Roadrunners is, the, is the group yeah. I'm working with. Yeah, like I said, the first time <laughs> I did it, I didn't know anything. They're sort of like training groups for people who are getting into that. I'm yeah. sure all the marathons probably have them. Yeah, LA's happens to be one of the <laughs> one of the most highly regarded, yeah. and that's great. It, it really teaches you how to train, how to run the marathon, and the support group is yeah. really the great thing to have. Is all these people of all kinds of different ages and backgrounds coming together to all try to do the same very difficult thing. You feel a camaraderie with them. You feel a responsibility. Like if you don't show up one week, everybody's like, where were you? You know, it's it's a great experience and you'll see that all too in the in the video. So. Cool. Well, congratulations. congratulations. Well, don't congratulate me yet. It's Mar March 20th is the marathon this year. So follow me on Twitter, at Jeff Kanata, and I'll be tweeting a lot about my training and, uh, and my run. Nice. My Lord just woke me up. It's Saturday morning. It's 5 a.m. And this is the uh, the toughest part of the training, is getting out of bed at 5 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning. Today we run a half marathon. It's a small victory anytime you can get out of bed. Made it out of bed, feeling a lot better now. Whoop, when you see him, boom, boom. Gonna try uh, using them. Also, many people, when I tell them this, they giggle, but I uh, got scotch tape over my nipples. Probably they giggle because I use the word nipples. Has to be done. Not proud of it. But it's very important. Uh, you know, you hear jokes about bloody nipples, but it's true. It is really true. A lot of people who run don't realize how important it is to have fuel in your body while you're running. I didn't realize it until I started doing the training. So I've got uh, Coach's Oats, which is some oatmeal. Highly recommend having some gels or fuels with you while you're running, especially for these long runs. You need to power your body with something. The first year I, I did the training, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And uh, I really appreciated being in a structured program that teaches me something about the process of training for a marathon. So that's why I keep returning to the to the Roadrunners. They're a really, really great group here in LA. Uh, and not to mention the fact that we get to run on Venice Beach. Uh, we're doing 13 miles today, but we're running at aerobic pace. So that means uh, one minute slower than race pace. So we're still in the building phase of training uh, for a few more weeks. I think we, we hit 18 miles at aerobic and then we bounce back down to 12 uh, up at race pace. Group six is about to launch 13 miles today. So uh, it hasn't stopped raining, which is nice. Excited. Coming to the finish. Coming into the finish. 13, we're a little over 13. Feeling good. I'm feeling real good. Big finish, big finish. Weather, weather cleared up. Good job, you guys! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Everybody did at least a half marathon today. Woo! The alarm just went off. It's time for a midweek run. I'm telling you, every time I get out of bed, it's a victory. That is today. We've got a 
40 minute aerobic run. My iPod loaded up with an audio book. So these midweek training runs really aren't that taxing at all. And that's the one thing I really learned with this training is that you don't have to run the farthest you've ever run or the fastest you've ever run every single time. And uh, your body starts building that aerobic threshold and, uh, and you get a higher tolerance without actually having to kill yourself every single day. So let's do this. So, that's uh, 40 minutes. Good morning run. We're gonna start the day. Alarm just went off. It's five o'clock in the morning, Saturday. <sighs> Gotta do it. Fourteen miles. Saturday is Saturday. We started with thirteen. We did fourteen. We're still on a road pace. Uh, so we move up to race pace in a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, feeling good. Alarm just went off. Time for a run. Charge the hill. Charge the hill. Right. Well done. Another day down. Feels good to start the morning this way. All right, everybody, remember to stick tuned for this day in rad history. And to our sponsors, Jeffrey. Yeah, you saw me uh, running all day. Mm. That was fun. Uh, and the fine folks at Reebok, as you saw, Sponsored this episode and gave me these uh, Zigtech shoes. They look Zigtastic. Zig Here's the cool thing about these shoes. As you saw, uh, you know, you, when you run, mm -hmm. all the energy goes down, right? Yes. And that can be bad for your shins. Correct. So the way this technology works, it's, it's, it's made to conserve energy. So you go down with the force and it transferred through the cool Zigtech ah, thing about Ziggy Deuce. technology. Uh, horizontally. Perfect. Uh, my favorite thing about these shoes actually is how stylish they look. Because Very cool. uh, I almost don't want to run in these just because I don't want to mess them up. They look so good. Yeah, they actually do look really good. I, I like wear them out as well. Uh, but they are, uh, but they don't, I, but I don't wear them out. Interesting. <laughs> uh, anyway, so thank you for Reebok for sponsoring the show. Um, running in them as you saw, um, running the marathon and um, these are, these are pretty, Fancy pretty shoes. sweet shoes. Yeah. Fancy shoes. Cool people. Stay tuned. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow's show, because we talk about World of Warcraft Cataclysm. Today is December 14th, and on this day in rad history, in 1984, the movie Dune was released. Based Amazing. on the popular novel. What is, what is the name of the third moon of Arrakis? Uso? <laughs> no. Wadib? Wadib. Wadib. Maybe, One of them is called Uso. <laughs> maybe called Paul Wadib. As a child, first of all, those special effects in the beginning with the force fields, still awesome. Still also, awesome I think this might have been the exact day that my younger sister was born. It is her birthday, and she was definitely born in the 80s. I'm trying to think no, of who it was older than me, I think. Is she called Paul Wadib? She is. <laughs> I call her Uso. Anyway, thank you, Alexandra <laughs> Babula, for <laughs> It's Alexandra. <laughs> Alexandra. <laughs> Alexandra.